Hi everyone, uh, welcome back. Before we jump in, just a quick note. If you are enjoying these STM32 tutorials and want to take your skills to the next level, I've created in-depth courses covering everything from the motor control to IMU integration. The links are below. All right, uh, today we will explore a powerful but often overlooked feature in STM32 development, DMA uh, for memory to memory transfers. If you ever used a um, memcpy function to transfer data, you might be surprised that you can double the, the transfer speed using DMA and free up the CPU at the same time. In this video, I will walk you through how to configure DMA for memory to memory transfers using STM32 CubeID. And then we will benchmark it against uh, MemCPy to see how much performance we gain. Uh, so let's start from uh, the CubeMix. Um, I've already created a project for this microcontroller, STM32L4 microcontroller, but all these configurations have to work for other STM32 microcontrollers. So since we are not using any peripheral like SPI or UART, we can head to the DMA configuration directly. So within the system core, we go to DMA, and here we have memory to memory. We need to press add button to configure new um, channel. So we have DMA channel one, but actually you can choose any other channel you want. And then uh, here we have additional configurations. Uh, we can use um, um, the default parameters. There's nothing much to change but if you want, you can change the data width. So here we have byte, half word, or word, but I keep um, byte as the data width. And also we increment the address. This ensures that DMA moves through the buffer um, automatically. So there's nothing, uh, so that's all we need to configure. Next thing, I will um, save the file uh, to generate the code, and then we will jump into the coding. So the next thing, we will compare these two methods, using memcpy and using DMA for memory to memory transfers. But before doing that, I want to make a few more changes in the, in the DMA configuration. So here, instead of byte, I want to use half word just to make the DMA more efficient. And also, we can enable the uh, interrupt. So when the data transfer is over, we can catch this event. So, so for that purpose, uh, it's it's pretty straightforward here. Within the NV, we just go to this uh, DMA global interrupt, and we here need to tick this box, and that's it. And then we can save the file to update our code uh, based on the changes we made. How do we compare these two methods? So for that purpose, I created two buffers, source address, uh, source buffer, and destination buffer. So we, we copy from the source to destination, and we have this amount of data, this amount of elements. And we will repeat this operation 100 times so we can precisely estimate the, the transfer time. And then within the uh, main function first i i feel i fill the the source uh, buffer with some dummy data not so important then within the for loop i use this function to uh, transfer uh, data from source to destination using dma and as i said we can use the interrupt to catch the data uh, when the data transfer is over so here I have the callback function, which is automatically executed. So here I set the flag. Then we can use this hal get tick to get the time difference. And then finally I compute the time in microseconds. Then I do the exactly the same 
thing for memsypy so we have destination address source address we have this amount of elements then we need to multiply by two because we have we are using half word not byte and and that's it next we can uh, debug just to see the difference so i open the life expressions and i already entered the variables i want to uh, i want to man monitor which is uh, the the execution time of gma and memsypy so let me run the code and we get this um uh, results which is really really interesting so for memsypy to transfer um 1024 half words it will take uh, 150 microseconds but when we use the dma we have only 70 microseconds which is two times less than 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 the result we get in when using memsypy so when you're working in time critical applications you can use uh, these uh, dma memory to memory transfer to save uh, quite important um, execution time and another important thing is that dma works in in non-blocking mode is that once you start uh, you can do other operations you don't need to wait until the data transfer is over instead you can do other things so that's it for today if you like the content please please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to press the like button it will help me to do new tutorials about stm32 programming and again if you want to explore stm32 development um, in depth using um, hands-on interesting projects uh, don't forget to check the courses on my website you can find the links on the description so thanks a lot for watching and see you soon